Hello students, this video clip uh, is going to provide the inventory cost flow procedure under the weighted average, the, the periodic system, and uh, the moving average perpetual system. Also, we are going to figure it out the how do we allocate the cost of goods sold and end the inventory under the FIFO uh, physical flow and the result of the periodic FIFO and perpetual FIFO. Finally, the LIFO, the following the matching principle with revenue, the current cost to match it uh, with the current selling price under the periodic LIFO and uh, the perpetual LIFO. Okay? So you can practice with this video clip uh, the over and over and over again until you got uh, understood everything, okay? So let's do this part one first. We want to calculate the, the cost of goods sold and ending inventory under the weighted average, the periodic system. Periodic means we want to get the cost of goods sold when we create a finance statement, income statement, like uh, where we put how much cost of goods sold we put. Mm -hmm. For example, we uh, the purchase the very similar items in a different prices like this, $10, $11.75, the $14 under the inflation uh, the environment we purchase the different amount like that way and then the sales 450 and the sales are 200 but at the end of the period like April 30th now we want to calculate, calculate the cost of goods sold so let's go together so how many cost of goods sold in unit we sold right we have the sales here 450 plus the sales on, on April 29th and then the next is in order to get the total cost of goods sold we need to get the, the unique cost of, cost of goods sold based on the weighted average in the financial accounting how did you get it? that's right it's very simple because this system is periodic system we got the total cost inventory purchased 11,400 over 950 so 12 dollars per unit cost is the cost of goods sold so we'll apply this into 650 so we just assume that we sold inventory value but unit cost twelve dollars. How many? Six hundred fifty units. So, the total cost of goods sold on the income statement should be recorded at seven thousand eight hundred. What about ending inventory? Now it's very easy. The total inventory purchased during the uh, the April, regardless of the sales, because that is a periodic system. At the end of the period, we uh, calculate. Uh, the, the number of units, right? And the inventory by subtracting uh, this cost of goods sold 650 uh, from the inventory purchased 950 in total. So 950 minus 650 cost of goods sold. Now the end inventory is the 300 on hand at the end of April. So we are following the weighted average. So the cost of goods sold, the unit cost is same as ending inventory under the weighted average period system. So you can get the answer of the ending inventory should be recorded on the balance sheet as the ending uh, on the balance. Also, it's very easy. It's out of this minus 7,800. So we got the same result. So let's Make sure that oh we include all the cost of goods sold and ending inventory. The sum of these two should be the same as 950, the inventory purchase. That is the capacity, total inventory on hand, or total inventory, uh, the cost of goods sold and 
and the inventory on hand at the end of April. So 650 plus 300. Good. And then also the cost of goods sold and the inventory in a total cost in dollar term should be the, should be 11,400. So 7,800 plus 3,600. So do you see? Match it. That's how do we get the weighted average period system, uh, the total cost of goods sold and, and the inventory. Okay, now a little bit challenging one, a little bit challenging one. Now let's switch the inventory cost assumption based on the perpetual system. We call it the moving average. Moving average means in a perpetual system, we measure the cost of goods sold every every moment we sell the product in the previous case the weighted average under the weighted average we ignored uh, the cost of goods sold when we sell right but we just calculate the cost of goods sold at the end of the period but in the perpetual system now we use moving average which is we are considered which, which is uh, the, the cost of goods sold measured every sale moment so cost of goods sold 450 then how do you get the cost of goods sold there that's correct now we calculate the average cost per unit until the april 23 until the april 23 which was the total cost of 200 2500 and 7,000, uh, 4,700 and divided by now where is the units right 250 plus 400 so now do you see we have the new cost of goods sold per unit different from the total cost per unit and weighted average again this is the perpetual system. Perpetual system means we recognize cost of goods sold every time we sell the product in the middle, okay? Not the end of the, uh, the period. So we have cost of goods sold, 4,955, 85. And the cost of goods sold on April 29th, now only 200, right? Every time when we sell then now it's a little bit challenging we should consider all the inventory in and out until that time so that's correct 2500 plus 4700 now minus cost of goods sold why that is inventory out so 4985 negative and then we purchased more, right? And then divided by units, number of units. 250 plus 400 and minus the cost of sold inventory out plus 300 inventory purchased. So we have moving average, new average. Why? Because the inventory purchased $14, the unit cost, was higher than 11.08 the moving average cost on April 23 so it gets higher the average gets higher right average the average unit cost gets higher then we have a new cost of goods sold amount here 2566 then total cost of goods sold during the uh during April now it's simple again the same 6 150 then then what is this total cost of goods sold total cost of goods sold is now we sum up this too so 7551 is now the total cost of goods sold during during April actually you don't have to calculate uh, this but to make sure how the total cost of goods sold in average in total is like 11.62 and then ending inventory is 
how do you get it? Ending inventory. Right, there you go. Out of a total 950 minus 650, which is ending inventory on hand after selling 650 cost of goods sold. And then, how do you get it? The ending inventory as well, right? It's very easy. Out of a total cost, that doesn't change. That doesn't change because there is a limited amount we purchased during uh, April. So 11,400 minus 7,551. So we got the ending inventory value that should be recorded on the balance sheet is 3,849. So we can get the unit cost in the same way of the ending inventory like that way. Then let's make sure that if the sum of this end inventory and cost of goods sold is 950, this should be 11,400. 11,400. So it's correct. So we're done. So let's take a look at the difference between two inventory uh, the cost of flow assumptions. On the weighted average period system, now the to the cost of goods sold is seven thousand eight hundred, but it gets lower on the moving average. On the moving average, cost of goods sold during during April is seven thousand five hundred fifty one. Why? Why is it lower than uh, the cost of goods sold on the weighted average? Weighted average unit cost is twelve dollars because it considers all the unit cost, all the unit cost at the end of the period. So we include that inflated inventory cost on April 28th, $14, which is high. So we include this, right? We include this. But here we have the, uh, the cost of goods sold the unit cost on April 23, only consider these two. $10 per unit and $11.75 per unit, which is lower than 14, right? And then this 300 dollars, 300 units of, of for a $14 per unit cost is not actually considered here. Actually considered in the cost of goods sold only uh, the, the, the day before the end of the, of the April. Okay, so that's why here total cost of goods sold during April is lower than uh, the cost of goods sold. But the other hand, the ending inventory definitely, definitely greater than this because the ending inventory now is including uh, the expensive inventory uh, the purchased in later, this uh, the $14 per unit. Okay, so that's the difference. So see you the next exercise in the next uh, video clip.